Foreclosure is a legal process in which a lender attempts to recover the balance of a loan from a borrower who has stopped making payments to the lender by forcing the sale of the asset used as the collateral for the loan. Formerly, a mortgage lender, or other lion holder, obtains a termination of a mortgage borrower's equitable right of redemption, either by court order or by operation of law. Usually a lender obtains a security interest from a borrower who mortgages or pledges an asset like a house to secure the loan. If the borrower defaults and the lender tries to repossess the property, Courts of equity can grant the borrower the equitable right of redemption if the borrower repays the debt. While this equitable right exists, it is a cloud on title and the lender cannot be sure that they can successfully repossess the property. Therefore, through the process of foreclosure, the lender seeks to foreclose the equitable right of redemption and take both legal and equitable title to the property in fee simple. Other land holders can also foreclose the owner's right of redemption for other debts, such as for overdue taxes, unpaid contractors' bills or overdue homeowners' association dues or assessments. The foreclosure process is applied to residential mortgage loans as a bank or other secured creditor selling or repossessing a parcel of real property after the owner has failed to comply with an agreement between the lender and borrower called the mortgage or deed of trust commonly. The violation of the mortgage is a default in payment of a promissory note, secured by a lien on the property. When the process is complete, the lender can sell the property and keep the proceeds to pay off its mortgage and any legal costs. And it is typically said that the lender has foreclosed its mortgage or lien if the promissory note was made with a recourse clause then if the sale does not bring enough to pay the existing balance of principal and fees the mortgagee can file a claim for a deficiency judgment. In many states in the United States, items included to calculate the amount of a deficiency judgment include the loan principal, accrued interest and attorney fees less the amount the lender bid at the foreclosure sale. Types of foreclosure The mortgage holder can usually initiate foreclosure at a time specified in the mortgage documents, typically some period of time after a default condition occurs. Within the United States, Canada and many other countries, several types of foreclosure exist. In the U.S., two of them, namely, by judicial sale and by power of sale, are widely used. But other modes of foreclosure are also possible in a few states. Judicial foreclosure Foreclosure by judicial sale, more commonly known as judicial foreclosure, which is available in every state involves the sale of the mortgaged property under the supervision of a court, with the proceeds going first to satisfy the mortgage, then other land holders, and, finally, the mortgager, borrower if any proceeds are left. Under this system, the lender initiates foreclosure by filing a lawsuit against the borrower. As with all other legal actions, all parties must be notified of the foreclosure, but notification requirements vary significantly from state to state. A judicial decision is announced after the exchange of pleadings at a hearing in a state or local court. In some rather rare instances, foreclosures are filed in federal courts. Non-judicial foreclosure Foreclosure by power of sale, also known as non-judicial foreclosure, is authorized by many states if a power of sale clause is included in the mortgage or if a deed of trust with such a clause was used, instead of an actual mortgage. In some states, like California and Texas, nearly all so-called mortgages are actually deeds of trust. This process involves the sale of the property by the mortgage holder without court supervision. This process is generally much faster and cheaper than foreclosure by judicial sale. As in judicial sale, the mortgage holder and other land holders are respectively first and second claimants to the proceeds from the sale. Strict foreclosure Other types of foreclosure are considered minor because of their limited availability. Under strict foreclosure, which is available in a few states including Connecticut, New Hampshire and Vermont, 
Suit is brought by the mortgagee and if successful, a court orders the defaulted mortgager to pay the mortgage within a specified period of time. Should the mortgager fail to do so, the mortgage holder gains the title to the property with no obligation to sell it. This type of foreclosure is generally available only when the value of the property is less than the debt. Historically, strict foreclosure was the original method of foreclosure. Acceleration Acceleration is a clause that is usually found in sections 16, 17, or 18 of a mortgage. Not all accelerations are the same for each mortgage, as it depends on the terms and conditions between lender and obligated mortgager. When a term in the mortgage has been broken, the acceleration clause goes into effect. It can declare the entire payable debt to the lender if the borrower were to transfer the title at a future date to a purchaser. The clause in the mortgage also instructs that a notice of acceleration must be served to the obligated mortgager who signed the note. Each mortgage gives a time period for the debtor to cure their loan. The most common time periods allotted to debtor is usually 30 days, but for commercial property it can be 10 days. The notice of acceleration is called a demandan, or breach letter. In the letter it informs the borrower that they have 10 or 30 days from the date on the letter to reinstate their loan. Demand breach letters are sent out by certified and regular mail to all notable addresses of the borrower. Also in the acceleration of the mortgage the lender must provide a payoff quote that is estimated 30 days from the date of the letter. This letter is called an FDCPA letter and or initial communication letter. Once the borrower receives the two letters providing a time period to reinstate or pay off their loan the lender must wait until that time expires in to take further action. When the 10 or 30 days have passed that means that the acceleration has expired and the lender can move forward with foreclosing on the property. The lender will also include any unpaid property taxes and delinquent payments in this amount. So if the borrower does not have significant equity they will owe more than the original amount of the mortgage. Lenders may also accelerate a loan if there is a transfer clause, obligating the mortgager to notify the lender of any transfer, whether a lease option, lease holder three years or more, land contracts, agreement for deed, transfer of title or interest in the property. The vast majority of mortgages today have acceleration clauses. The holder of a mortgage without this clause has only two options, either to wait until all of the payments come due or convince a court to compel her sale of some parts of the property in lieu of the past due payments. Alternatively, the court may order the property sold subject to the mortgage, with the proceeds from the sale going to the payments owed the mortgage holder. Process the process of foreclosure can be rapid or lengthy and varies from state to state. Other options such as refinancing, a short sale, alternate financing, temporary arrangements with the lender, or even bankruptcy may present homeowners with ways to avoid foreclosure. Websites which can connect individual borrowers and homeowners to lenders are increasingly offered as mechanisms to bypass traditional lenders while meeting payment obligations for mortgage providers. Although there are slight differences between the states, the foreclosure process generally follows a timeline beginning with initial missed payments, moving to a sale being scheduled and finally a redemption period. Strict foreclosure, judicial foreclosure in the United States, there are two types of foreclosure in most states described by common law, using a deed in lieu of foreclosure, or strict foreclosure. The note holder claims the title and possession of the property back in full satisfaction of a debt, usually on contract. In the proceeding simply known as foreclosure, the lender must sue the defaulting borrower in state court. Upon final judgment in the lender's favor, the property is subject to auction by the county sheriff or some other officer of the court. 
Many states require this sort of proceeding in some or all cases of foreclosure to protect any equity the debtor may have in the property. In case the value of the debt being foreclosed on is substantially less than the market value of the real property, this also discourages a strategic foreclosure by a lender who wants to obtain the property. In this foreclosure, the sheriff then issues a deed to the winning bidder at auction. Banks and other institutional lenders may bid in the amount of the owed debt at the sale but there are a number of other factors that may influence the bid. And if no other buyers step forward the lender receives title to the real property in return. Non-judicial foreclosure Historically, the vast majority of judicial foreclosures have been unopposed. Since most defaulting borrowers have no money with which to hire counsel, therefore, the U.S. financial services industry has lobbied since the mid-19th century for faster foreclosure procedures that would not clog up state courts with uncontested cases and would lower the cost of credit. Lenders have also argued that taking foreclosures out of the courts is actually kinder and less traumatic to defaulting borrowers as it avoids the interim effects of being sued. In response, a slight majority of U.S. states have adopted non-judicial foreclosure procedures in which the mortgagee gives the debtor a notice of default and the mortgagee's intent to sell the real property in a form prescribed by state statute. The nod in some states must also be recorded against the property. This type of foreclosure is commonly referred to as statutory or non-judicial foreclosure as opposed to judicial because the mortgagee does not need to file an actual lawsuit to initiate the foreclosure. A few states impose additional procedural requirements such as having documents stamped by a court clerk. Colorado requires the use of a county public trustee, a government official, rather than a private trustee specializing in carrying out foreclosures. However, in most states, the only government official involved in a non-judicial foreclosure is the county recorder, who merely records any pre-sale notices and the trustee's deed upon sale. In this power of sale type of foreclosure, if the debtor fails to cure the default or use other lawful means to stop the sale, the mortgagee or its representative conduct a public auction in a manner similar to the sheriff's auction. Notably, the lender itself can bid for the property at the auction, and is the only bidder that can make a credit bid, while all other bidders must be able to immediately present the auctioneer with cash or a cash equivalent like a cashier's check. In May 2012, the U.S. Supreme Court resolved uncertainty surrounding a secured creditor's right to credit bid in a sale under a Chapter 11 bankruptcy plan. In Radlax Gateway Hotel, LLC v. Amalgamated Bank, 566 U.S. Blank. The court found it was obligated to interpret the bankruptcy code clearly and predictably using well-established principles of statutory construction, resolving the lingering uncertainties related to credit bidding under a Chapter 11 plan and upholding secured creditors' rights. The highest bidder at the auction becomes the owner of the real property, free and clear of interest of the former owner but possibly encumbered by liens superior to the foreclosed mortgage. Further legal action, such as an eviction, may be necessary to obtain possession of the premises if the former occupant fails to voluntarily vacate. Defenses in some states, particularly those where only judicial foreclosure is available, the constitutional issue of due process has affected the ability of some lenders to foreclose. In Ohio, the Federal District Court for the Northern District of Ohio has dismissed numerous foreclosure actions by lenders because of the inability of the alleged lender to prove that they are the real party in interest. In June 2008, a Colorado District Court judge also dismissed a foreclosure action because of failure of the alleged lender to prove they were the real party in interest. In contrast, in six federal judicial circuits and the majority of non-judicial foreclosure states, due process has already been judicially determined to be a frivolous defense.
The entire point of non-judicial foreclosure is that there is no state actor involved. The constitutional right of due process protects people only from violations of their civil rights by state actors, not private actors. A further rationale is that under the principle of freedom of contract, if debtors wish to enjoy the additional protection of the formalities of judicial foreclosure, it is their burden to find a lender willing to provide a loan secured by a traditional conventional mortgage instead of a deed of trust with a power of sale. The difficulty in finding such a lender in non-judicial foreclosure states is not the state's problem. Courts have also rejected as frivolous the argument that the mere legislative act of authorizing or regulating the non-judicial foreclosure process thereby transforms the process itself into state action. In turn, since there is no right to due process in non-judicial foreclosure, it has been held that it is irrelevant whether the borrower had actual notice of the foreclosure, as long as the foreclosure trustee performed the tasks prescribed by statute in an attempt to give notice. Equitable foreclosure, strict foreclosure, is an equitable right available in some states. The strict foreclosure period arises after the foreclosure sale has taken place and is available to the foreclosure sale purchaser. The foreclosure sale purchaser must petition a court for a decree that cuts off any junior lien holder's rights to redeem the senior debt. If the junior lien holder fails to object within the judicially established time frame, his lien is cancelled and the purchaser's title is cleared. This effect is the same as the strict foreclosure that occurred at common law in England's courts of equity as a response to the development of the equity of redemption, title search and tax lien issues in most jurisdictions. It is customary for the foreclosing lender to obtain a title search of the real property and to notify all other persons who may have lens on the property whether by judgment, by contract, or by statute or other law, so that they may appear and assert their interest in the foreclosure litigation. This is accomplished through the filing of a list pendants as part of the lawsuit and recordation of it in order to provide public notice of the pendency of the foreclosure action. In all U.S., jurisdictions, a lender who conducts a foreclosure sale of real property which is the subject of a federal tax lien must give 25 days notice of the sale to the Internal Revenue Service. Failure to give notice to the IRS results in the lien remaining attached to the real property after the sale. Therefore, it is imperative the lender search local federal tax liens so if parties involved in the foreclosure have a federal tax lien filed against him, the proper notice to the IRS is given. A detailed explanation by the IRS of the federal tax lien process can be found.